Today I want to talk about the goodness of God. I want to refer to the book of Psalms, chapter 18. Everybody was with you, please turn. Psalms 18. You don't have a Bible, there should be some Bible in the pews. Beginning at verse 1. Today we read 1 through 22. I want to read 1 and 2 as well as 3. But uh, before I read this, I want to give you a good thing. This is the Psalm of David. And it was about him being delivered from the hands of the enemy. As many of you know, Saul was envious of David because David was anointed to be king and he tried to kill David. But David was escaping. The Lord gave him a way out. And this is when he wrote this, this psalm. And here we get into verse number one. It says, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. He said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. He says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. How many of you need to be saved from your enemies? They say, call upon the Lord, for the Lord is his rock. What do you mean by rock? It's a sure foundation. You need something to stand on. The Bible speaks about, it often uses metaphors to describe who the Lord is. And David, one, one, uh, one writer in particular, he used the Lord in these following, I'm going to list about, I got eight metaphors here I want to, to look at and then we're going to expand on these things. One is, he said, he is my rock. And that's a sure foundation, that's safety shelter and support. He said, he is my fortress, protection from the enemy. He's my deliverer. That's from suffering, afflictions, and temptation. He said, he's my God, almighty, and they call him the strong one. He is my strength, source of power. He's my buckler. He's a shield from the enemy, from the fiery darts of the devil. He is the horn of my salvation. When you see the word Horn in the Bible here is representation of power. Animals used to use their horns to fend off others, to fight, to defend, or to attack. And so horns is a symbol of a power. And he says, he also is my high tower, where you are lifted up beyond the reach of your enemy. Beyond the reach of your enemy. Isn't it a good place to be? It would be nice if we just stay like that, wouldn't it? Look at his neighbor and say, whether you know it or not, you are beyond the reach of the enemy. Let me give you some examples. The Bible says, when you believe you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you are sealed, you are baptized into the body of Christ. Ephesians 4 and 30 says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit, God whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. God is with you. He won't abandon you. But here, David was a, a, had a special relationship with the Lord. He was given a title by the Lord. In fact, the title he was given probably is one of the greatest titles that God gave a man in the Bible. He called him a man after his own heart. And that's mentioned in 1 Samuel 13 and 14. David knew about God and the faithfulness of God. He knew that the Lord was a strong foundation. He referred to the Lord in metaphor for us in, in a number of occasions, as well as other writers throughout the Bible. They referred to the Lord as my shepherd. Some say he's the bright morning star, the lamb of God, man from heaven, the lion of Judah. All those are metaphors describing the strength of Almighty God. I don't know about you, but I know it's a good thing to have a God that's strong. Yes. A God that can keep me in the midst of this foolishness. Not just protect me from my enemies, but to protect me from myself. Yes. How many you know that self can get you in trouble? Yes. But you got a God that can even protect you from yourself. Yes. They say, he is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my buckler. A buckler is a small shield. It's a little small thing because the 
It's lightweight for, for, for easy movement. He said, he is my bunker, a strong tower, a high tower. I lift it up away out of the reach of my enemies. What the psalmist is saying that God is faithful. He, he understands how this goes because David was given a responsibility as a boy to take care of his father's sheep. And a lion came upon him and he, he delivered the sheep from a lion. And a bear came upon him and he delivered the sheep from a bear. Then later on in his life, Goliath came before him. And since he knew God was faithful with a lion and a bear, he said, surely the Lord would deliver this uncircumcised Philistine into my hands. When you know that God has been proven by you, you've been battle tested, you have engaged the enemy, and you've been victorious. When he showed up now, we're looking for him. The Bible said David hastened unto him, not fearing, not wondering what the outcome would be. He trusts the Lord with all his own heart. He didn't lean to his own understanding. We have to get the place in this walk in Christ where we get beside ourselves. We got to lead from ourselves. We got to have a spiritual sight. Not a physical sight, but a spiritual sight. Because a physical sight only takes you to a problem, but a spiritual sight will take you through a problem. Yes, sir. The spiritual son said, the Lord is my rock. Yeah. He is for sure. He is certain. Uh -huh. Yes, and he will. The three Hebrew boys, when they were faced with being tossed in the fiery furnace, they said, our Lord shall deliver us yeah. Yeah. from out of great Nebuchadnezzar's hand. You big bad king, Nebuchadnezzar. And they said, oh, great king, be that as it may. We still say no to you. Now why? Because my God is bigger than you. Amen. When I was a little kid, sometimes we used to have little things going back with, with uh, some of my little buddies about who fathers the best. My father's better than you. And my father can beat your father. And we got more money than you. Our car is better than your car. How many of y'all don't know me? It was just me because we used to do that when I was little. We used to say that kind of stuff. We didn't, we didn't know no better. We was told not to, but we, we did it after we left the porch. Hello? So when I see the enemy show up, I, I, sometimes I, I, I let him know something. I don't spend my time talking to the devil and pleading with the devil. I call upon the name of Jesus because he is my help in the time of trouble. I call on the name of Jesus when the enemy comes in like a floodgate, he raises up a standard. He keeps me. I'm reminded of a song that said, Rock of Ages. Because Israel was a stony place. Cleft for thee. It's a place in the, in the rocks where they were going high when the enemy would come. And it also was a place to give them shelter from a bad storm. When they say, Cleft for me, it's my hiding place. I have a secret place where I can go hide. Christ Jesus, when the storm comes, when my enemy comes to eat of my flesh, I got a high place in the Lord. And it's certain, it's certain, he shall never be moved. I told you in many occasions that there's no counsel that can see against the Lord. He is who he is, and he's a way out of no way. And guess what? Can't nobody do nothing about it. I remember as a child, I was a troubled child, and uh, uh, I got in a lot of fights. When I was listening to those kids say, I invented, and this, I was thinking, 1959, I invented trouble. <laughs> I understand in 59, I, that's what I was doing with it. But then Jesus showed up. <laughs> Jesus has a way of changing some things in your life, doesn't he? You want to go right and he can straighten you out. You want to do this, but he touches your heart to where you can't do the things you wanted to do because those things are wrong and now he's giving you a purpose and he has called you out and he's giving you directions. He showed you how to please him. Simon as David was in love with the Lord. How many of you are in love with the Lord? Some people say I love the name of Jesus, but I love Jesus. 
Because he's been so good to me. He's been so good to me. The psalmist says this in Psalms 41 and 11. But this I know. Thou favors me. Because my enemies don't try to me. Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Have you ever got to a place where you don't want? That means you don't lack. you got a God that can get you to a place where you don't want. You don't lack. He said, He leads me beside the still waters. Mm. You know, that's pleasant to know. He says, He lay down in green pastures. I like when he says, surely, goodness and mercy to follow me all the days of my life. you got to know who the Lord is in the song. you got to understand that he is forever faithful. All of his ways is just and true. He is your rock. Some of you think I'm talking about the insurance company. <laughs> talking about the holy rock. The one and only rock. The keeper of my soul, the forgiver of my sins, the giver of eternal life. Yes, yes, my hope, my strength. Yes, he wrote my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. My rock calls me by my name. My rocks love me in the daytime and in the nighttime and throughout the day. My rock cares for me. He makes a way for me. My rock. Has took me out of my clay and set my feet on high to stay. My God, He walks for me, He talks for me, and He tells me I'm His own. My God is for me, and if my God be for me, who, who can be against me? You know say? Who can be against me? Enemy come to eat of my flesh, but my rock says they stumble and fail. May do it for a night, but because I got the right, joy comes in the morning. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the rock is with me, and the Lord shall deliver us from them all. Yes, the rock is with me. Death is swallowed up in victory because of the rock. The tomb is empty because of the rock. I'm a shepherd because of the rock. Yes, yes, yes. 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 The death angel show up. The rock says, yes. the absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Yes. yes. Trouble all around me, but I have peace of God with me. Why? Because the rock comes me. Yes. Yes. I walk strong. I talk strong. I trust strong. I lean not to my own understanding. I trust the rock because the rock's been proven to be faithful. No one tell you the rock was it when the flood came. Daniel will tell you there's a rock in the lion's den. Shadrach and the uh, Shadrach, Meshach and the Bendigo will tell you there's a rock in the fire and furnace. Joseph will tell you there was a rock in the and How sweet it is. How sweet it is. How sweet it is to know the rock. A fortress. Oh, God that can keep me in the midst of all this foolishness and blood. To make us whole. We press our way in the snow to praise his name. Yes, we come to learn of his ways. We come to say yes and amen to the ways of God. God is not slack in his promises concerning you. He is never ever able to deny himself. What he says for you will be done. Yes. But your neighbor say, have a little patience. Have a little God is not through with us yet. But your neighbor say, we're not a finished product. I want you to turn your Bibles to Philippians 1. I was at the altar this morning, I 
out of their hand. You know, I'll tell you something. The Lord is moving with me and things. He draws me close to places. This place is one of them. This is like this one of the magnets right here. I got some other places he draws me to, but this place right here in particular, this little spot on the floor, this is my little spot right here. I start right here, and then I lay right here. I was laying down here today so long I was falling asleep. <laughs> I looked up, it was almost 7 o'clock. I, like, I was like, wow, but the Lord made stuff known to him. And I was telling the class just today that it's something that we all have the ability to do. You might not know all the books of the Bible and which gospel presents Christ as a king and a servant. You might not know all the laws of 16, I mean the 613 commandments in the law, but you can pray. Amen. It's real simple, isn't it? You can call upon your rock Amen. when you need. You can call upon a rock when sorrow has overtaken you. He can show up with joy. Amen. You can call on a rock when trouble is every side. He can bring peace. Amen. Call upon the name of the Lord. Just a call. Special. Romans 10 13 it says, Those that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes. If I call upon him, he's my rock, I shall be saved. Yes. It's a special thing to be saved. Yes. This is what I want you to notice. You're not where you're going to be just yet. Mm -hmm. But you never say, we're, we're not. Here in Philippians 1 and 6 it says, Philippians 1 and 6, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath began a good work in you, he, not you, he is referring to the rock, God Almighty. It says, will perform it until the day of Jesus the Christ, the anointed one. This thing that he started with you, he will complete it. You're close to being perfected, but you're not there yet. You still have a few issues. Look at today and say, I, I know I'm looking good today, but I still have just a few issues. <laughs> I still have a, a, a slight, a, a few imperfections. I still got a few little things you might don't know about me just yet. But God, word that he will finish me. Amen. He can't start something and leave me short of being finished. His word says that he can't deny the word because he can't deny himself. So I'm confident, I'm fully persuaded, I'm past having doubt. I'm convinced and convicted that Jesus is Lord. Amen. Yes, yes, and he's forever faithful and all of his ways are just the truth. And he cares about me and he cares about you. Yeah. And he keeps my soul. Yeah. Yes, he Tell you, David said, I know you love me. And he loves my soul. We got a faithful God. Yes. yes, yes. This lamb of the tribe of Judah. Yes. My rock. Oh. Mary's baby. Yes. My rock. Yes. Lamb that take away the sin of the world. My rock. The only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. My rock. The word that became flesh. My rock. Yes, yes. When the tomb was empty, it was caused. My rock. Yes, yes. When they, when they took you before Pontius Pilate, he said, you have not a word to say. Where is your defense? What he was telling them. Christ said, I don't need no defense for you. This is what I come to do. I got power to lay my life down. But guess what? I also have power to pick it up. Amen. Yes. We serve a God that's overcome death. Yes. You might not be scared of a lot of things, but some of y'all, when you face with death, you get scared. How many people have been faced with death and got scared or you was about to be in a car crash? Don't fake it, don't fake it, because we know better. He was like, oh my Lord, please, oh, oh holy Jesus. You ever ask somebody, somebody about to rob you, Lord, please don't let him kill us. 
Everybody ever done that, huh? How about a bad report from the doctor? Maybe that changes your mind. You ever got a bad report and stuff like Oh, Lord Jesus, <laughs> have mercy upon him. He was all just singing all the gospel stuff before that. But when it get close enough, sometimes people get a little weary. But I'm telling you, you better press your way through. You better be like that woman with the issue of blood. She knew about, about a man named Jesus, and he was coming through. And she said, I don't have to touch him. All I have to do is get close enough to touch the hem of his garment. You may be just a little ways away from being set free. You may be just a little ways away from getting breakthrough. Because your life is not just a protection. He's a blesser. He's a provider. He's a way maker. He's a healer. He's a God of reconciliation. God of relationship. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's a God of growth. He's a God of growth. Yes, the Bible says he prunes the branches so they can produce more. <clears throat> Pruning ain't a good feeling, but wait to see what it produce. You got a guy, sometimes he do a move or sometimes he tells me I need to do something and I, and I present it. I'm like, hey, I don't see all the end of this thing. But guess what? When you serve a, a mighty God and a holy God and a just God, you don't have to see. All you got to do is trust. I don't have to. You just give me a sign and I'm going to do it. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to do my sign. I want to please the Lord. So with that being said, I want to. I don't want to be too long before you today because I'm going to have a chance to praise the Lord. I want to praise the Lord today. The enemy will come up against us. Mm -hmm. He will. He's been coming. He's been leaving with a whooping. Good to say he's been getting a whooping. So let me tell you this. He's going to keep getting a whooping. Amen. Why? Because God is bigger than him. Amen. God is all powerful. Yes. He's in control. Yes. We belong to him. Yes. He's not willing to lose none of us. Yes. He's not willing to give up on none of us. Yes. So even though the big bear wolf is outside the door, he may huff and he may puff, but you ain't going nothing down. So, when it all said and done, we will be standing. When it all said and done, we will praise the name of Jesus. When it all said and done, we will bow down and put our crowns before our King. The rock, the salvation, our buckler, our shield, our strong tower, a way out of nowhere. A good God. Some of you should testify that you might have been broke, sick, suffering, and sorrows, or homeless, or drug addicts, or prostitutes. He has saved you and sanctified you. Now you're holy. Holy. Holy unto him. He's changed you. You're not who you used to be. You got a defense, a refuge. He is holy. He is holy. He is holy. So I say the Lord is holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. I want some kind of easy praise just to go forth right now. Enough words, it's time to praise Him. It's time to give Him the honor and the glory that He's due. His word. You know, He can heal you in the middle of some praises. Yeah, He can lift you up in the middle of praises. Yes, he can, he can keep the enemy off if you take some time to praise him. Right now, just give him some minutes. Forget about your problems and your suffering and your sorrows you may have. Some of you may have. Just take some time to, to praise him. Now, who you used to be, take some time to praise him. It's a new season. It's a new season. Blessings. You can't put new wine in all his hands. Walk in the fullness of what he has for you. His road is straight, it's narrow. His life changing, it's merciful. It's the road of forgiveness. It's the road of healing and reconciliation. It's the road of peace. It's the road of power. It's the road of purpose. Because he is our rock. He's a 
sure foundation in Jesus. Strong power. Sometimes we just want to run and hide from all our problems. Just forget about all, our, all we got to face with the next day. And when you run into that secret place, you restrict you. You renew your strength. So you can come out now. If you, if you don't go in that place, some, some of you try to run all on your own. You do for about two days. You got five days of weakness. I'm telling you, find the rock. Run and hide in the rock. Be renewed. Be strengthened. Be made whole. Be restored. Some people let their children still enjoy. Don't let your children still enjoy. Turn your children over to Jesus. Yeah. Turn them over to the rock. Yeah. Lord, I trust you with this. This one came for me. This is my own. You love me, love him. You love me, do a move in his life. If you love me, save your soul. If you love me, keep them, bring them back from the world. You are my rock, my help, my friend. Sticks closer than a brother. Quiet, give me something. We want, we want something to give it all. Just all oh, just glide in. It's just like a wind blowing on the sail right now. We just want to just move easy right now. Let's bring it, bring it.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bless your name. 